We're going to take a look at this in this video is how to find all factors and roots of a polynomial. So we're going to take a look at the polynomial that's given to us here, q1 of x. First thing we want to take a look at is our constant term, the one at the end there. So it's a negative 5. What that lets us know is for our factors, when I take a look at some factors, the number that's right here needs to be a factor of negative 5. Because when I'm multiplying all my factors together, however many there would end up being, when I multiply all these together, I'm going to end up getting a negative 5. That only gives me a couple of options. That means I have x plus 1 or x minus 1 as a possible factor, and I have x plus 5 or x minus 5 as a possible factor. The next thing I want to do, once I have that in mind, is I want to take a look at a graph. So if I take a look at the graph of this polynomial, it looks like that, and I can see that right there is a root, which means it is probably going to be at 1, which means that I have a factor of x minus 1. Now, what I would want to do is double-check that on the table to make sure it equals 0, and if that's the case, then I know that that is my factor. And as it works out, it does. So check that on your table, on your graphing calculator, and it works out. So then what I want to do is I want to take this polynomial right here, and I want to divide it by its factor to give me the other quadratic factor. So that's the next step of this process. So I am now going to do polynomial division. I'm going to take my x minus 1. And I'm going to use that and divide x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus 5. Now, when I do my polynomial division, that first term right there always starts off in this box. That's always where I want to start this. So I put my x cubed right here. And now I figure out what goes up top. And there's two different ways I can think of that. I can either say that x times what number here will equal x cubed, or I can say x cubed divided by x equals what number. Either way, I get an answer of x squared. Now, once I have that one, I can figure out now this box because it is x squared times negative 1. And x squared times negative 1 is going to be, give me a negative x squared. My diagonals will always add up to be like terms. So that one and whatever goes in up here is going to end up giving me my next term of 3x squared. So that box is going to have to be a 4x squared. And once I have that in, I'll repeat the process I just did. What goes up top here? So that is going to be a positive 4x. 4x times negative 1 will give me my next box down here of a negative 4x. My diagonal here will give me positive x, so it has to be 5x. And again, repeat the process. This is positive 5. Positive 5 times negative 1 gives me a negative 5, which works out correctly. So now I have my quadratic factor. So these two right here multiply together to give me this polynomial as a result. If I can factor this, then I want to go through and factor it. In this particular case, that will not work out. I do not have factors that will, that will work out for that one. So my factors for this problem are x minus 1 times x squared plus 4x plus 5. I have a linear factor, and I have a quadratic factor. So that part of the problem is now done. The next thing I want to do is find my roots. And to find the roots, those are the values that make the polynomial equal 0. So now I'm going to do zero product property. So x minus 1 equals 0, and x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 0. 
So figuring out this one right here, that's easy enough. I get x equals positive 1. And that one was actually given to us on the very first slide I looked at on the graph. So if we look at our graph again, that was our root right there of 1. Now, to solve this one, I need to do something a little different now. I need to solve that quadratic when it equals 0. So I'm going to do the quadratic formula. So to do my quadratic formula, I am now going to go through and take x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. And this just needs to be simplified now. As you can see underneath the radical, which is called the discriminant, I'm getting a negative solution here. So my discriminant is going to be negative 4. That tells me that I'm going to have complex solutions. So I take the square root there, and I end up getting negative 4 plus or minus 2i over 2. Since my denominator can divide both terms in the numerator, I can simplify that. So x equals 2 plus or minus i. So my roots for this problem are going to be x equals 1, and x is going to equal 2 plus i, and x is going to equal 2 minus i. So I now have found all three roots of the third degree polynomial, and I found the factors of the third degree polynomial.